Yeah, that's okay too. Alright. Um, cool, cool, cool. We'll go with the... Oh, hey, I see my rating. Look at this. Serral, 918. Reina, 670. Trigger, 439. Roddy, 419. Come on, they could have given me one extra point for the 420. What the hell is even that? Why would you make me 419? Just give me 420 then. People have been memeing about me being high anyway. You have high than beyond? No, I don't think I was high than beyond. I do feel robbed of one point there though, guys. Come on. <laughs> what, what do you mean 419? Why can't I be 420? <laughs> you have plus one in our hearts. Alright, I'm actually I'm gonna have to start the recording just in case. So it's time, guys, for the WTL Code S 2023 season, winter season, official opener for Basilisk. Very first best of two is going to be between Claymore and our handsome, sweet Canadian boy, Trigger. Trigger does have good PVT. Now, obviously, this is going to be played on the new patch. Yeah, Chelsea had 500, right? How the hell does he get 500? I get 419 when I 2 0 him. Oh, <laughs> poor Trigger yawning. It's like 8 a.m. for him. Why are we facing TL in the first round? It's completely random. It is a round robin uh, format. So we're going to have to play all other 11 teams. There are 12 teams in total. And they just randomly. Uh, Clem is also yawning. <laughs> 2 p.m. is as early for Clem as 8 a.m. is for Trigger. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why they gave Trigger such a low rating, but it doesn't matter. Dragon skills, guys. Last season, Trigger did get a very, very important 2-0 over Beyond for us. Uh, because of that 2-0, we were able to defeat the Shopify Rebellion. Here we go. Apparently, we're just going to hop into it. I love it. Let's get it on. Season opener for Basilisk. Let's get it on. Round 1. Fight. Top left side of Dragon Skills. The Canadian Protoss representing us. The handsome nerds. One of the magical four. It is a Trigger. Bottom right side. The guy that everyone talks about. Liquid Clam. <laughs> so we are playing on Dragon Skills. But the loser will have map choice. And you can pick one of the old maps. But you can also pick new maps. So today is going to be a little bit of both. Some older map pool. Some newer map pool. We are playing, however, on the new patch. Now, Clem has played a lot of games on the new patch. I don't know how many games Trigger has played on them. Uh, good chance we're going to see a mixture between yeah, Bio and Cyclones. We had Creed in the chat earlier, already talking about some new sick push that Terran apparently is able to afford. Uh, I think it's Triple Barracks 1 Factory, where they push you with a whole bunch of Marines and a bunch of Cyclones. I don't know what to expect, guys. Let's just lean back and enjoy the ride. Hopefully, Trigger will be able to get a point on the board. Hello, Wayne. Good job yesterday, Wayne. Sick performance, mate. Absolute MVP of the second day of WTL Code S. Mr. Wayne going 3-0. Winning the ace match. Winning his series 2-0. You want to watch the VOD so bad, but you're not a sub. I'll give you a sub. I don't want to alt tab right now because that's going to ruin the recording, but I will give you a sub after this game. New patch. New patch. Everything new patch today, guys. All the series are best of two. And if we're all tied up after six maps of StarCraft 2, so if the score is 3-3, three and three, then we go to an ace match. Would actually be kind of sick. For the drama, seeing Clem against Cero, maybe, on the new patch, that would be pretty mental. But I would be completely okay with us winning without this going to an ace match. Thank you, Pi. Oh, damn it. I haven't disabled my alert. Thank you so much, Pi. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your uh, VOD, Wayne. I was very loving about you. Seems that Clem is up to his old tricks. And I guess we're going to proxy a starport. So for all the talk about Cyclones, we may just open up here with a Hellion drop. And I'll be honest, I actually think that's kind of smart. Because there is a good chance that Trigger is going to scout this and be like, Oh, this has to be Cyclones, right? This definitely will be Cyclones. Can't be anything other than Cyclones. And then, bam, they go for a Hellion drop. What about me, Rainer versus Clem? I feel like the odds of Roddy being the ace for Basilisk are about as high as Rainer being the ace for Basilisk at the moment. And I wasn't preparing on playing today, so... No, I don't think that will be the ace match. 
Double Adept is at least going to get a good scout off here, guys. Because now Trigger will know. It's like, okay, it's not those Cyclones that everybody's talking about. It's Hellions. And if there are Hellions, you always have to think about a potential Hellion drop. You can see that Trigger is already scouting a little bit. Hellion drops are incredibly naughty. But if you're in the right spot, it doesn't have to be that bad. But if you're out of position and four Hellions get unloaded in your main base, it can be GG immediately. You can lose 15 probes and that's all she wrote. Like what I would love here, guys, is a temporary full wall off on the side of Trigger. And just put all of your units between your natural and your main. Here we go. It's four Hellions that are going to get dropped. At least we've got three Stalkers here. Clem is going to try to unload them at the ramp. And he's going to get a decent amount of probes here. But I think around seven. I think Clem is going to get around seven. And I think I can live with seven. Ah, it's nine. I cannot really live with nine. Seven, I think, would have been manageable. But nine with the Medivac still alive. And all three Hellions still alive. We are not done yet. Oh, oh, oh. Liquid Claymore, guys. He can get a money shot. He gets 15. Make it 16, and we are just in all sorts of trouble. 18 probes have died in 4 minutes and 25 seconds. And I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but that is kind of all she wrote. That is just not something you recover from in this matchup. Honestly, not something you recover from in any matchup. Doesn't matter if you play Protoss, Terran, or Zerg. If you lose 18 workers in a 4-minute game. I... A single battery would have helped. Clem knows that he's absolutely cooking. Yeah. Trigger might try to make a YOLO blink happen, but this cannot really go anywhere, guys. Unfortunately, this just cannot really go anywhere. This is how 60% of Clem's TVP go. Funny. New patch. You think about Cyclones. Everybody was waiting for Cyclones. And then Clem just brings out an old special. Four Hellions unloaded in the main. Trigger is going to try to go up to three bases, but... I also feel that if you ever want to turn this game somehow into something, you cannot go Colossus. Because even if you play Colossus in a normal game against Clem, it's already incredibly hard to make something of it. Uh, Colossus without Thermal Lens won't do anything for you, so... I feel that Trigger needs to play Stalker Disruptor here and just hope for absolutely magical balls. Go, go, Trigger. Make up for the Fast Mo games. Trigger was fine in the horror game. A lot better than Roddy. I almost got Serral killed, guys. That would have been the end of Roddy's run in Basilisk. I didn't know I was not allowed to talk in the closet. <laughs> Trigger has charge on the way. He is going to go for a Colossus. I don't really like that, but I'd also be lying if I say that with Disruptors I would be very hopeful. I think we simply lost too many workers. Down 34 supply. Clem's first push is going to hit like a truck. Observer is going to get picked off as well. It's a disaster. Rough start for us into the WTO Codest 2023 winter season, but okay trigger can pick any map he wants maybe he's very comfortable on one of the new maps and we get to see one of those new maps commentating these kinds of games are always a little bit sad right because obviously a terran is gonna wait until the upgrades kick in but you know i can theory craft and speculate all i want it, it should really be impossible not max packs not rain not parting not stats or trap would be able to turn a start like this into something. We do have a couple of force would go down, but Trigger's army is just very sad and underwhelming. But we can obviously use these final moments of dragon skills to maybe get a bit more comfortable. And hope we can find a little bit of rhythm. MC turn around. No. Nope. MC would have probably uh, just died against the Hellions. <laughs> The tanks are here. Obviously, Trigger is going to try to take a good fight with Battery Overcharge. He's also Supply Blocked, so there is one more Colossus, or yeah, there's the Colossus. You guys can see in the bottom right side. Clemens is going to stim into the natural. The Fuel Marauders is good enough to gun down one of the Colossus. The Protoss army is incredibly weak here. There's very little you can do. And it all came down to the Hellion drop. It felt that Trigger knew about it, even though he couldn't quite locate the starport. He was clearly scouting. He was moving around. He was thinking about it, but... Not having a single shield battery. And Clem obviously doing a very good job in moving those Hellions around. 
you don't really have blink there yet. This is tough. It is very tough. It is what it is. Brutal start. Nice view out of the window for Trigger, guys. He's in the middle of the nature. He's got nature's blessing. Maybe Trigger should have been a Warcraft 3 professional. Play Night Elf. Surrounded by trees. Would have been one hell of a Night Elf player, I'll tell you that much. Did you see the garlic picture, Roddy? If you mean in the Discord, yes. Yeah. I, I think nature is beautiful, but I don't personally love to spend too many days in a row in the middle of nowhere. I like the convenience of having a tap where I can just drink water whenever I want. I like to shower and I really hate bugs. <laughs> so, I'm more of an in and out kind of nature guy. It's like, oh, that looks beautiful. The great outdoors. And then I just want to go home to the comfort of my own house. <laughs> it will be nice to see matches on the new maps. I definitely think you'll see a couple, mate. Wouldn't be too worried about it. I am sure we'll see a couple of the new maps. Is this fair? Which part? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, there's nothing wrong with having a nice view over a lake, being on a mountain, having a beer. All of that is fun, but at the end of the day, I'd like to be home. The ELO difference. Well, I don't know how they come to the ELO scores, but they've been all over the place. Bjorn also had around 400-something, which is obviously ridiculous. Bjorn is one of the best players in the world. Uh, coming into this best of two, of course, Clem is the favorite. Clem is... The second, third, fourth best Terran player in the world. Trigger is an excellent Protoss, but not exactly the second or third best in the world. So, Obviously, it's blind seating. We don't know who's going to play who until both teams have submitted their roster. Uh, but Trigger defeated Bjorn last season 2-0. So I do still believe that he can uh, turn this into something. First game is just brutal. Like There's nothing else to say. Hellion dropped it way too much. And then, unfortunately, it is game over. I know a lot of people are complaining about the Widowmine guys, but the Hellion has more potential than the Widowmine in most cases. <laughs> what will be the second map? Will Trigger pick one of the new maps? Or are we going to go for one of the older ones? Probably is what it is, Handyman Artist. Because I guess Beyond had a pretty bad WTL season, right? So Peter the Eater. Who is better at their respective sport in their prime, Cero or McGregor? I'd say Cero. Because Cero has been dominant for a long time. He's been a world champ. Went to many different uh, events. Meanwhile, Conor McGregor has never defended a single title he earned. Now, prime Conor was definitely amazing. Was ultra hype. And he clearly was very good. But Cero did it for a much longer time. I think it was a lot more convincing. Sarah is indeed still in his prime. Meanwhile, Conor McGregor is on his uh, Lamborghini yacht, getting drunk and doing illegal things. <laughs> so, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Sarah over Conor. Even though I hope Yona will take this okay, Conor his trash talk was slightly better. <laughs> Conor was better in uh, the press conferences when it came to trash talking. Yona clearly is a much sweeter man, so Yona's got that going for himself. Didn't think I was ever going to compare Sarah and Conor McGregor, but here we are. WTL Winter Season 2023. <laughs> are Sarah and Reyna playing? Yes, Reyna will be our second player. Sarah is going to be our third player. They're taking their sweet time. Which makes me wonder if Trigger is going over all the new maps. And wondering if he should go for one of them. Personally, if I was Trigger and I am the underdog, I would pick one of the newer maps. Whether or not I'm very comfortable on it, I just think it would be nice to pick a map that Sarah hasn't played, uh, that Clem hasn't played a whole lot on. So you either pick one of the weird original new maps, or you just pick like Rat Who Said Station, or I don't know. 
What are the other new mumps? E Equilibrium. <laughs> I've compared Serol to a final Dark Souls boss before. I would rather compare Serol to level 11 of uh, Geometry Dash. If any of you guys play that game. Level 11 or level 12, whatever it was. Euthermo will probably remember if he's still here. Euthermo was an absolute god tier gamer in that game. I have rarely been that addicted to a mobile game. Actually, that's the only time in my life that I was very addicted to a mobile game. Oh, we go for one of the new maps, guys. Trigger decided that he wants to play on a site Delta. I do believe this is a bit more of a standard newer map. Yeah, it was a bit weird slowly, but... I don't know. Maybe they had to find the graphics of the new maps. Site Delta. Top left versus bottom right. It is a map with a ramp leading into the natural. One of the very few new maps that has a ramp leading into the natural. Not exactly sure what Trigger loves about this map versus Terran, but maybe we're about to find out. Maybe he's gonna go one base Tempest, baby. One base Tempest. If I was Trigger, I would have prepared something on a new map in advance. Mm -hmm. I think they've known that they would play against each other for like three or four days, so. There was a bit of a heads up for the nerds that this was going to happen. They are really taking their sweet time. Watching WTL code S is a lot of fun, but the random downtime can definitely be a little bit frustrating. Because sometimes I step away for a second, I come back and we're two and a half minutes into the game. I'm like, all right, damn it. And every now and then I sit here for like 12 minutes wondering what is the holdup. Especially in the middle of a best of two. It really should not be all that hard to start a game. But here we go, guys. We have loaded into the second game. A round two fight in the top left side. Taking the 1-0 lead for the boys in blue. Team Liquid's Claymore. Bottom right side, representing Basilisk, it is our Canadian Protoss player, Trigger. Good morning, Mac. Jeez Louise, what are you doing up, Mac? Minus nine hours, I don't even want to know what time it is for you. Mana says they swapped to the servers. They swapped server to Europe game one, so I guess game one was on NA and game two is on Europe. Patching it again might take some time for both players observers, hence the delay, my guess. Fair enough, I think it's a pretty good guess. Why clan play versus trigger? Sarah and Razy, Rainer, easy win 2-0. The main reason why clan plays against trigger is because that is just the way that we seeded the players. I think Mana is the one who submits the seeding for Team Liquid. I submit the seeding for Basilisk. We just pick three players in a random order, send them to a WTL admin, and then the WTL admin tells us who's playing who. We decided that Trigger would be our first player. I will not tell you why. And Team Liquid decided that Clem would be their first player. We decided those things in the dark. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Got an eBay block coming out of Clem in game two. It's already pretty annoying. You can see the trigger is not very happy with it. This is obviously going to disrupt his build order a little bit. But at least there isn't too much HP. On the hey, that's no cancel? Yeah, you can see it. See it in the webcam there of Clem. Clem did not cancel his engineering bay, baby. First blood in favor of trigger. 125 minerals down the drain. GG. <laughs> Don't know about GG, but... I think you put the uh, players in order of best looking. No, because uh, then Rainer would be last. Rainer is our second player. There's no way that that boy would not be the worst. <laughs> Getting the worst of that one. I'm going for back to back proxy starport. Absolutely scandalous behavior here by Liquid Klima. He's doing it off one base as well. 
Now maybe Clem is going to do this a lot because Frodo's players will feel that Stargate is worse against Cyclone. So they're going to go for a lot of uh, Twilight openings. And I think Twilight is a little bit worse against Hellion drops. Trigger is going for a second gate baby before the Twilight. This is all a little bit weird to me. Alright, well let's just hope that we lose a whole bunch less probes than we did in game one, guys. It is on a new patch, yes. New patch, a new map. Roddy is bullying Rainer out. It's okay, he bullies me all the time. And he gets me in trouble. Asking me for meetups with controversial people. It's all Rainer's fault. Four Hellions making their way towards the bottom side of side Delta as the starport is done. Medivac is on the way. We don't have a shield battery. I'm honestly very concerned once more, guys. At least we have double gate instead of single gate. But this is going to hit like a truck again. And that wall off is actually going to work against us. All of the probes are going to be stuck. I think we're going to lose 18 again, man. Ay, ay, ay. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to curse here, but I'm willing to curse. Okay, at least the probes were not all stuck. It's only six so far, but Clem is not done yet. Clem wants more. Nine is already painful, but I don't even think it's going to stay at nine. Clem makes it 11. Stupid Hellions. Can we at least get the medevac? No. Blink is nowhere near done. Trigger obviously wiggling in his chair. He is not happy with this start. Down five workers in a five-minute game against Claymaw. Back-to-back -back proxy star boys, back-to-back -back Hellion drops. One of the Hellions does get picked off, but these two Hellions can still get a couple of additional kills, and they will at least get three more. Will they get four more? Yes, it's kind of unbelievable. Trigger cannot believe it. He's wondering, did I really put my alarm clock for this? Get Hellion dropped in back-to-back -back games by Clam. Clam completely forgot about the eBay that he lost. Now, this was obviously an all-out one base opening by Clem, but he has done a tremendous amount of damage once more. Yeah, Star Stargate is very good against this stuff. Twilight, most of the time, is not. It seemed like the double gate really did not help us at all. don't think there is a lot that Trigger can really get done here. The tank count already at two. Very painful. Very, very painful. Crappy best of two, guys. No other way to put it. Clem has a 2-1-1 setup now, I believe. So he can build... Uh, he can build a Marine, a Marauder, a Tank, and a Medivac at the same time. And I think when Clem walks to the other side of the map, it's just going to be over. It is just too much economic damage. I don't know what... Okay. It's always annoying to be like, oh, the game is over five minutes in, right? We're going for a Templar Archives. Maybe we can sneak out an Archon and take a magical fight with Stalker, Zealot, and one Archon. But it really is a bit of a pipe dream. All the talk about Widowmines, guys, but I never hear anybody talk about Hellions. <laughs> I have a small, I have a slightly bigger issue with Hellions killing workers than I have with Widowmines killing workers. Not a, pop, a very popular opinion on Reddit, but I think Hellions are a lot better than killing workers than Widowmines are. How about nerf both? If it would take Hellions four shots to kill a probe, we'd be absolutely cooking. They nerf Blue Flame, yeah, but that's so late in the game that I don't really mind that much. <laughs> I think obviously. Deep into the game, even if Blue Flame Hellions drive in and kill 15 probes, it's not really game ending, right? Like if a Protoss drops from 75 workers to 60, that's annoying, somewhat costly, but you can recover from that because at that point you have a lot of income. You have four next size so you can build four probes at a time. But in the beginning of the game, if you only have two next size, you can only build two probes at a time. If you lose 15 workers, it just takes forever to recover from that. And it's not that Trigger lost 15 workers and that's it. He lost an insane amount of mining time and 15 workers. I think Clem is better at killing workers than most players. He absolutely is. Like, I'm not actually saying here, guys, that I think Hellions are in balance, but... If you ask me personally, Roddy, what bothers you more? Widow mines killing workers or Hellions? Well, I would definitely say uh, Hellions. This is probably going to be the end of the opening best of two. Liquid Claymore looked strong and powerful as always, and he's going to finish the job here with an 8 Marine Stim drop in the main base. 
and a big push through the center of the map. Because of the amount of economic damage Trigger took, there's very little he can do. He does land a couple of sweet juicy storms though. But now he's going to lose all High Templars. And even if it's not for the Marines, the Marauders are going to be an issue. The tanks are an issue. Now the reason the quality is a bit lower is because I am just watching a Link. I'm not allowed to join these games. Actually really good fights by Trigger here guys. Legitimately really good fights by Trigger. Can we? Are we allowed to dream? Or I don't I don't want to dream yet. But I'm starting to believe that perhaps we can dream. Trigger has done incredibly well in the last minute. We land one more big fat juicy storm. Or we just take a good fight if we're being patient. Maybe we can land a feedback if we can't really storm. Legitimately incredibly good man. Getting those tanks, getting all those marines, very impressive. I Templars are exposed though, and unfortunately this is all right before Storm and the final few Marauders perhaps is just a little bit too much to deal with. Oh, what a sad moment to lose those three High Templars, guys. Because Trigger did amazing in the last 90 seconds. Now we lost three High Templars, we don't get the Archon. Obviously the Stalkers are very low in HP, Clem's army is just a little bit too big. Look at the production tab in the top left that kind of says it all. Damn it, I wish he would have saved those High Templars on the high ground. Then maybe we would have had the most magical comeback that I think we're probably going to see today. After a start like that, winning a PvT against Clem would have been absolutely spectacular. What happened with the proxy? Uh, Trigger is not able to use this proxy yet because he obviously needs every single unit at home at the moment. He's gonna try to let a couple of Zealots come in from the left, maybe uh, at least activate the Widow Mines, pick off some of the reinforcements. And does this High Templar have anything? Feedback then, at least, mate. If it's gonna die, please feedback. Mm. Unfortunately, guys, Clem's army is a bit too strong, I feel. Too much micro potential. These Matavax, do they have that new in imbalanced upgrade yet, guys? They've been healing these Marauders and Marines for days. Awesome to see a bit of fighting spirit coming out of Trigger here in game 2, despite the fact that he had a very bad start. Why is Miko not playing? Good question. Is uh, Nikita already in Bulgaria, by the way? I'm not sure why uh, they didn't send out E-Laser. Maybe Mana has a very imbalanced build. We have a recall. I think we're recalling High Templar, right? Yeah. We are recalling two High Templars from the top left side, trying to land a storm. We'll clip a couple of these units. Clem is very close to ending it and he knows it. He's gonna try to get the job done with these 10 Marauders. Look at the amount of healing. Oh, these Widow Mines, by the way, guys, are gonna get a couple of very good shots off and the shots are magical. Maybe a few Marauders should turn around. It's a single Marauder, guys, that's gonna try to gun down High Templars. One of the High Templars did get picked off. I believe the Templar Archives has died. But we've got Ghosts on the way and... This is just an unfair fight at the moment. Trigger knows it. You can see a bit of frustration and sadness on his face there. He did his best. Just the starts were way too rough. The starts were rough. We had a small chance there after we took out all three tanks. And maybe if we would have been able to get a bit of value of those three High Templars that were so close to having the energy to storm. Because these were pretty big by the way. And walking up this ramp into Widow Mines, into Ghost. There's a bunker as well, the safety bunker. Claymore is going to get a 2-0 victory in his opening best of two of the WTL Codes 2023 winter season. And that obviously means that Basilisk is in a little bit of trouble. I'm still very confident that our boys can bring it back. Claymore is obviously a super strong player. But we're going to need a strong Rainer today. And we're going to need a strong Serral today because we start 0-2. Clem comes out swinging. 2-0 lead for Team Liquid. Back to back Hellion drops, guys. Clem is like, take that, Reddit. You guys complaining about Widow Mines, Widow Mines, Widow Mines. Let me introduce you to my old friend, the Hellion. Well, almost forgot that we have to complain about that, but. 87% of you guys believe that Clem is gonna get a 2 0. Clem does get the 2 0. Second best of two will be Rainer versus Kalazur. Best of two. Rainer 2 0. Kalazur 2 0. Draw. Also, guys, I just want all of you guys to know that this is a bit of a magical moment. It is the absolute uh, last time that you guys will see Kalazur represent Team Liquid. I believe he's been with the Orc for 
three years, either almost three years or a little bit over three years. Uh, he already announced that he is leaving. This will be the last time that we see Diego. Kellogg represent the boys in blue. <laughs> Gonna get a little emotional. Got so used to it. I, uh, I thought it was always a very good fit. I think Diego is a sweetheart, a great player, a great guy. And obviously Team Liquid is an amazing orc, so... I am a little bit emotional, guys. Now, I, I, I kind of hope he has a bad ending. I'm sorry, Diego, but <laughs> we, we kind of need a victory here, so... I hope Raynor gets the job done for us. As much as I love Diego, I kind of hope this is a horrible ending. <laughs> Just a quick 2-0 for, for Raynor and we're all tied up. Against anyone else that is not part of Basilisk, I would have been cheering harder than I ever did with Diego. But not today. Basilisk is in trouble as a bold statement with Sarah and Raynor next in line. I didn't say Basilisk is in trouble. I said Basilisk is in a tiny bit of trouble, which is obviously different than being in a world of trouble. But if just either Kalazur or Mana has one cool, unique build on the new maps, on the new patch, and they get they both get a point, then it's over. If just one of the two gets a point, it would go to an ace match. And in an ace match, we get to play most likely against that French kid again, who's pretty good. And obviously, new patch, new maps, there is no guarantee that our boys are favored over Clem. So, I think saying that we are in a tiny bit of trouble is not an overstatement. I think it's pretty fair. Definitely don't think we have lost yet, but... Not the dream start. You think any team that's going to pick up Kalazur is going to be popping off? Yeah, for anyone who is wondering about uh, Diego, is he retiring? No. Kalazur's plan is absolutely not to retire. He already stated that he's looking for a different team, and if anyone is interested in picking him up, he is uh, willing to have conversation. But, yeah, unfortunately, the marriage between Diego and Liquid came to an ending. I do agree that Azurk boys are the favorite. Guys, don't take my words out of context. You know, sometimes I can't win with you guys. If we are down 0-2 and I'm like, don't worry, I think my boys got it. They're like, oh, Ruddy, so cocky, so annoying. And if I say that I think we're in a tiny bit of trouble, everyone's like, oh, Ruddy, you're not in trouble at all. Like, you got Rainer and Sarah. It's like, I can't win. <laughs> it's also brand new patch, guys. Brand new patch, brand new maps. It is definitely not a foregone conclusion that this is just 2-0-2-0 in favor of our big Zork boys. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not biased enough. Sometimes I'm too biased. It is what it is. Savavi <laughs> Sharky. Hey, uh, Miko. We just had Raider in the chat. He was wondering why are you not playing today? Thank you, by the way, to Caleb for gifting a hobby to Miko. Team Liquid Chair and Basilisk shirt. Can you stop being so biased? I mean, we just don't have any Basilisk chairs yet. If we ever get one, I promise you guys I will be sitting on it. But this chair has been excellent to me. I got this chair for casting TSL 7 or 8. I forgot which one it was, but Secret Labs was a sponsor of TSL. And I said, like, hey, since we're doing it from home, it's an online tournament, we would like you to sit on our chair. And that was one of the greatest gifts that I've received because I've been using it ever since and I'm very happy with this chair. Brand new patch, brand new maps, but is it a brand new Ruddy? No. I think Ruddy has been very consistent in his behavior online over the last 12, 13 years. Of course, sometimes I'm a bit happier than any other days, but almost like I am a human. I think all of us have periods in life where we are a bit more up and sometimes we're a bit more down, but I wouldn't say it's a brand new Ruddy. I think same old Ruddy. When are we going to build a basilisk house? I don't know if that's truly really necessary. I'm not sure if Sarah would like to live with Raynor, Trigger and Roddy. I don't know if I want to live with any of them, to be completely honest. I tried living with Raynor. I'm still mentally recovering from the worst two months of my life. No, I'm kidding. It was fine. It was actually very fun. <laughs> we had a good time. Good vibes. And obviously Trigger also stayed for a little over two weeks at my house, which I think was a lot of fun as well. 
And I hope he feels the same way about it. Well, I think all the boys like their own personal space. And like where they live. Hmm? The McDonald's slaps. Hell yeah. It's very dangerous to talk to me about McDonald's on a Sunday. Because then I'm very eager to drive over and have a spicy McChicken. Thank you, Speed Racer 1914 for the 37 months. Seems that we are getting ready for our second best of two. It's 2-0 two and zero in favor of the boys in blue. For the last time ever, guys, in an official match, Calazur will be re representing Team Liquid. And obviously, he's going to do his absolute best to make it an amazing goodbye. I love Diego, but I hope it is not his day. I hope that Raynor... Even though I think Rainer is not ultra fond of the new patch. I hope Rainer is ready. I know he's been watching a decent amount of games and obviously he's been practicing a little bit too. Hopefully Rainer is strong. 670 for Rainer, guys. The man won game is 8 and home story cup. WTL is like 670. Sounds about right. You know, all these other guys that didn't win a tournament, we're going to make them 700, 750, 800. So Reyna, you won the biggest tournament of the year, or second biggest tournament of the year? 670. What is that shirt, by the way, that Reyna is wearing? I've never seen this shirt. Did Reyna spend that game as eight money on new expensive sweaters? Uh-oh, the boys are leaving. Can you believe it? Up to zero, Team Liquid Scalazur. He spawns in the top left side. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of our very own Italian Stallion, Basilisk Reyna. And Kalazur is sending out the boys. Or at least one boy. Why are we sending out one boy? Wait, what is this? What am I looking at? It's kind of strange, no? Hmm. Why grass one? Because that was the starting map. The second map could be one of the new maps, but it truly depends on who's going to lose. I thought we were going to get some sort of a proxy. Did Kalazur just try to block the natural? And then follow... Ah, that's actually kind of an idea. Where maybe on the new patch, if you want to go like Reaper, Heli, and Cyclone, and you can block the natural of the Zerg, maybe eBay blocks will become a thing in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Windchild. Thanks for another month of great casting. I mean, we're only a couple hours into this month, but I'm going to do my best, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yes, they always start off on one of the old maps. Obviously, starting play day two, guys, every everything will be on the new maps. But since we didn't know when this patch was going to go live or the new maps were going to be released, uh, the matchups and the maps were already announced, and then all of a sudden the new patch went live, so they didn't want to change that. So both of these nerds already knew for like five days in advance or four or five days that they would play on Grasvon, but the loser can pick any of the new or old maps. Liquid just indeed needs one more map to go to the ace match. And obviously we know that that French kid is probably pretty eager to play an ace match. Good chance that Kalazur is going to go for like a mixture between Reapers, Hellions and Cyclones. That he's going to rally to the other side of the map. Kalazur has really taken the whole Boca effect to a whole new level. I like a bit of a blurry background, but I think that Diego is pushing it a little. <laughs> I don't know if Sal would approve of this amount of Boca. You did not get to see the first game, was it fun? If you're a Terran player and you enjoy watching a lot of probes die early, you would absolutely enjoy that first best of two. If you're a neutral spectator and you just want to watch nice, fun, competitive StarCraft 2, that first series uh, is not one I would recommend. Gonna be the NVIDIA broadcast effect. Not what I'm not sure what it is, but I feel like Todd used to have this too. And I kind of thought it was just a mistake on Todd's side, where I'm like, does Todd not know how his camera works? Like, his camera is ultra blurry. But then it seemed to be on purpose, and I'm like, alright. I guess this is just not my uh, preferred webcam setting. Mm. Rainer going for a very quick lair attack here, guys. So we have three minutes lair attack on the way. Roach one is going down in the front. Meanwhile, Diego is making Hellions. And first, Banshee is on the production tab. Cloak is being researched as well. Definitely uh, different openings than what we saw in the previous patch. 
You see it more on Microsoft Teams and professional meetings. I guess Diego is a businessman too. I mean, we don't need to talk about that forever. I just think it's funny. I, it's not like Raider's camera looks very good. He actually is using my camera right now. I gave him my old Sony cam, like a A6100. And I'm, I'm very, like, I give Raynor a lot of crap, as you guys know. I bully Raynor a lot. But he actually got it all to work by himself. I'm very impressed. Obviously, Cell helped him a little bit as there is a Reaper grenade going down that knocks the Queen out of position. And what is up with the boys in blue just trying to kill an insane amount of workers early. We have a single Roach here. We need to kill one more Hellion to prevent the one-shot. i got to say, I kind of like the way that Raynor defended this, guys. Beautiful split on the drones. And Lester Zerg, I think, would have lost a whole lot more there with the Queens being out of position. Raynor is probably not happy with the seven workers he lost. But I am still impressed because I thought he was going to lose a little bit more. Oh, but now we have the Banshee showing up and Cloak is ready. There is an Overseer morphing. That Overseer is halfway done. Kalazur is going to be able to land a decent amount of shots. That's two drones falling immediately. But that Banshee is going to die. Now that's actually good by Reyna too. It's a lot of lost mining time. But killing the Banshee like that... What we just witnessed, guys, in the last 45 seconds was actually very good defense by Reyna. Because I think a lesser Zerg would have lost a whole lot more. Well done. Now, it would have obviously been way better if uh, <laughs> those Hellions did not get into the natural and main base at all. But that happened, and then I think the crisis management was great. After all this bullying, Rainer is going to take a drive in his Bugatti and cry. Rainer is doing good, but I don't know if he's doing that good. But yeah, the fact that I gifted him a camera, and obviously it stood in a box there for many months. But then he spoke with Cell, and then Cell said, like, ah, oh, you just get this and this. And then he actually put the capture card in his computer by himself. I was like, holy smokes. You know, I can't even tease him for this because that's more than I would have been able to do. I truly needed Cell for everything. And then I called over one of my other friends to actually put all of it in. But ah, a little round of applause to Rainer. More grown up in that regard than I am. Hmm. Infestation pit going down. Six minutes into the game. Double Evo. One Monroaches. Probably going to see a whole bunch of those. Maybe a few Ravages in the mix too. Or perhaps I'm just too grown up. No, no, no. I'm just an absolute pleb with computers and technology. If one thing doesn't work, I have a minor meltdown. I've been very chill lately on stream, but that's mostly because everything is working. Surprising after he tried to put in his GPU with a 10 inch chef's knife instead of a screwdriver. <laughs> well, I applaud him for even trying. I looked at that a long time ago, and then people are like, don't worry, Rod, it's just like Lego, but it's like very expensive Lego. And I see people like pushing a CPU in, I was like, yeah, I'm never doing that. There's no freaking way. I'm buying a new CPU for like 500 bucks, and I have to do this myself. And hope it's all right. Hope it clicks or something. It's like, no way. Fongo does land on a couple of these Marines. And the Medivax too. So it's a pretty sweet Fongo. Once more, only two workers fall on Reyna's side. Well, they have your best man demo yet? Yes. I went to Sweden a little over a month ago. It was after Game is 8, right? Yeah. Uh, like one or two weekends after Game is 8. Uh, we went to Sweden and... Attended Ben's wedding. was a lot of fun. I feel like Rainer is starting to uh, get in a very comfortable spot. As we are 8 minutes into Grass 1. Rainer is up 20 workers. He's up 20 supply. We've got plus 2 carapace on the way. He's also adding in plus 1 melee. Creep is making some good progress. We're on 4 bases. I kind of like what I see out of Rainer. Kalazur has used... I want to say very little... Of the new patch so far. Wow, Raider's Hive is even done already. That's wild. First Viper on the way. A couple drones do get picked off. And one Overlord is going to get sniped. A Roach is going to fall. But plenty of uh, units here for Raider to stabilize. And I guess Diego's is going to play a very passive game. With like Bio, Tank. He's dropping a Marauder. He's building a few more Barracks. But... It just feels that Raynor is not really going to be under any real pressure anytime soon. I kind of feel like he's chilling. 
It's got an Ultralisk Cavern on the way. Diego is going to move out with a decent amount of units. And obviously, you do need to be careful as a Zerg. You cannot take bad fights here. But I think especially on Creep, a single Fungal. A couple of Corrosive Bows or even Blinding Cloud. Abduct all of it. It should be pretty fantastic. Rainer is floating a decent amount of minerals. I'd love to see him spend those. I, I don't hate the uh, audio too much. It's a bit weird, but I don't hate it. I hate the low quality a little bit more. Rainer snipes one of the tanks immediately, but does need to be careful there because that is a lot of marauders. And the investors were trailing, so Rainer now floating 1800 minerals, guys. And I'm not quite sure what he's waiting for. I guess he was waiting for that Ultralisk Cavern to finish up. I mean, Ultras are cheaper now, guys, but you also need gas, and he just doesn't really have a whole lot of gas. Now building six more overlords. I hope we stop at that. He's gonna make seven more overlords, even though he only needed three. It does land a nice fungal though. Can we do that a few more times? The second fungal is a little less good. I got a blinding cloud, but I don't know if this is the fight to take. I really don't like this fight, I think, for Reyna, guys. Especially not at the bottom. At the top, it's going all right. At the bottom, I didn't like it. And I wanna say, I guess it went slightly better than I thought it would go, but I don't wanna call that a very big win. We now have a whole bunch of marines stimming in range of mineral. That is a nice fungo as we land the cross about too. Uh, if Reyna stabilizes on Ultras, it is fine. Maybe it was all good enough. I got very concerned there for a split second. I thought that the army at the bottom was going to get absolutely obliterated. It turns out it was decent in the end. Waiting for Zergling speed to finish up. So we've got plus one melee, but we don't have Zergling speed. Roaches and Ravages getting picked off. Obviously, that is not very pretty. Rain is still floating a lot of minerals. I guess Bell building slow Zerglings is kind of useless. At least the Ultras are going to have Kindness Plating. Rain is still up 20 workers. Skalazur does not have 2-2 two, two upgrades on the way. He is just doing it on 3 bases. 8 racks, 3 base. A couple Liberators making their way to the other side of the map too. This is still very close, guys. There is one tank stuck in the main by the looks of it. And I'm very happy about that. I don't think Kalazur is building a Ghost Academy because Kalazur is not planning on playing a macro game here, mate. He's trying to end it with the 8 barracks on 3 bases and he's just rallying Marines, Marauders, Tanks and Liberators to the other side of the map. Building a Ghost Academy is expensive and it takes a little while. The man does not care. He just wants to keep on pushing. Rainer has bought some time for himself but all of these slow links are gonna get found. Kalazur is gonna stim. That's probably a dead hatchery. I don't think that Rainer is gonna be able to save it. Are the infestors here to maybe punish some of these buy units? Not really. Rainer loses a decent amount of supply there, guys. And actually cannot mind of the center base either. So after losing that base, Rainer is a three base Zerg now and he's gonna take this fight. But he's gonna run through a couple of the Liberators. The tanks are getting very big shots up, but a lot of the bio is still stuck inside of the Metavax. And I think that may very well be a saving grace, but I do think Reyna needs to retreat back to the right. Diego's playing pretty good. His absolute final act as a man that is representing Team Liquid. He's playing a pretty sweet game here on Gresvon. 12 minutes in, Reyna is forced to lose another base. Can't really do a whole lot about this. That means he's still a 3 base Zerg, but he does have upgrades on his side. He's got attack advantage. I don't know if we land any fungals here. I can barely see anything. We're going to drop a blinding cloud. All I see is pixels, but I see a lot of Zerg units dying, and that doesn't really bode very well. That parasitic bomb was a little bit too late, and Raynor loses his entire army. And Kella Zur is going to put... Did, uh, were the Ultras stuck or something? Was the Roach one blocking the Ultras? Uh, 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 three base Rainer, guys, is in all sorts of trouble. I don't know if he's even going to cancel the hatchery or not. Now Kalazur starts plus two, but that's obviously a bit of a meme. Because it really is all about this army. Rainer's gonna try to make the miraculous comeback happen with a tiny link counterattack. But the, especially the Liberators really pack a punch. And that is the ultimate answer that Diego needed to deal with these Ultras from Raynor. Wow, eight drones dying. Rainer now down to two hatcheries. Little link counterattack is not going to do a whole lot. We're out of spellcasters. We're out of energy, and it is Kella God Diego who's gonna take the one-zero lead in this little best of two, and that means that Team Liquid will have four match points. Obviously, one of them would be shared with us if we manage to win three in a row, but. That is rough. Can we say that we're in a little bit of trouble now, guys? As GG gets called, and as his final act as a member of Team Liquid, he takes the 1-0 lead against Raynor. Diego, 
Jaeger, you haven't won yet, mate. I know you're flexing. He's happy. He probably feels that whatever he did here is already big. Because at the bare minimum, Team Liquid will get one point here. But obviously, with the position that they are currently in, they won a whole lot more than one point. Uh, a strong game by Kalazur. Rainer took one or two questionable fights. Was floating a few too many minerals. It felt that the mineral gas... Uh, Combo was a tiny bit off. I don't know. Kalazo had a decent start, obviously, getting a couple of drones against a two base opener. That is more damage than Rainer would have liked to take, but I think Rainer, his crisis management was still pretty good. Is he joining any other team yet? Well, I'm pretty certain that whoever is interested in Diego will be more interested after that performance. He is a free agent. And he is uh, he's open for conversation. Looking for stuff. Where's the ELO leaderboard? I don't know if they have an official one yet. Wonder what Rainer is going to pick, guys. Rainer could pick Ancient or Altitude. Go for one of the older maps that he's very comfortable on. But he can also pick one of the new maps. I don't know if one of the new maps people have looked at and said, Wow, this map is freaking amazing for Zerg. I know very little about which new map favors what race. I don't really know. I'm thinking a little bit of the new maps. Maybe that Equilibrium map, or whatever you call it. Maybe that's good for Zerg, but... I guess that's also a pretty decent split map uh, scenario. I think Rainer will just pick Altitude, or most like Ancient or Altitude, I think. Maybe Altitude. I don't know if Rainer loves Altitude, actually. I think he does. Thank you, Gemini, by the way, for the raid. I hope you had a good stream, maybe. Sixty-eight Vikings versus twenty-four Phoenix in the Cure Classic game. Wow, that's mental. Sixty-eight Vikings. Uh, did uh, Classic play Phoenix Robo and he doesn't have Storm or something? Trying to play Phoenix Colossus Carriers, I guess. Ah, that's cool. I'm actually gonna take a little look at that. Yeah, guys, final day of Wardy's tournament, so make sure to take a little look at Wardy's stream. $2,500 for the winner of Wadi's Korean Royale. Battle Royale, TV Royale. Taking a look at that game right now. Oh my god, that's so many Vikings. Rainer is going to pick Ancient. So he's actually going to go for one of the older maps. I am, uh, I'm not too sad about it. Because all I want to see right now is a Rainer W. Diego is obviously ultra happy already. And a man with this much momentum and this much feel-good is dangerous. Here we go. On the top right side of Ancient, we are looking at the main base of the man who is representing Team Liquid for the last time in his career. Kalagot, a.k.a. Kalazur, also known as Diego. In the bottom left side, guys, we are looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion. Your game is 8 and Home Story Cup champion, Reynor, representing Basilisk. So, for the people who are unfamiliar with WTL, we're down 0-3. Basilisk needs to win this game. Then Serol needs to win 2-0. And if all of those things happen, then we go to an ace match. But obviously that's a lot of if, buts and maybe. Skellis is going to build his first barracks as a proxy. But he's also taking a gas at home. Now you guys got me uh, interested in this game over at Wadi stream, by the way. I want to see the army of classic because I just see a million freaking Vikings killing everything. Oh, the, oh my god. Oh my god, what an army by Cure. There's no way classic wins that game. Classic is going to lose that fight without killing anything. That is a crazy game, but uh, I can guarantee you that the Vikings are going to absolutely destroy that Protoss Air army. What an army by, uh, by Cure. Seems fun. Amazing day of games on that channel, guys. Uh, I think the winner of that series will move on to play against Bion. The winner of that will play against Dark. And the winner of all of that will play against Maru. So, a couple of amazing games to look forward to over at Wadi's channel. Uh, Kalazur is doing one hell of a build here, guys. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but it does seem that Kalagod has been preparing something very spicy. It is an all-out one base all-in by the looks of it. 
Where we're just gonna try to win the game with nothing but Cyclones. This is one hell of a build. A barracks proxy building a reactor with not one but two factories coming online. Rainer sending a couple of Zerglings to the other side of the map. What should Rainer do here? I don't know. I have literally never seen this. Ethelma says, Diego's been watching my YouTube. This is very nice though. Four links running into the main base as the wall off is not complete yet. And Kalazur has absolutely zero units at home that can fight this. So this is actually very solid. Don't lose your links though, Rainer. Killing two SCVs is nice, but it's super important to keep these links alive for as long as possible. Rainer is taking this mega serious. And I like it. Two spines going up in the back of the main. How good are spines against Cyclones? Well, Cyclones have very little HP. So I'm tempted to say pretty good. I, I want to see Queens too, though. I think non-stop Queen production is pretty much the most important thing, right? Uh, Cyclones are very cheap. But having your SCVs chase Zerklings completely ruins your build. I don't know if Rainer is comfortable with... Uh Oh, this is a great fight, by the way, guys. Only a couple of SCVs fighting at a time. In the end, these links do fall. But three more SCVs. So five SCVs for only four Zerklings. That is massive. Rainer is just going to try to buy as much time as possible for Zerkling speed. We've got a spine. We've got plenty of links. I think those links in the main base completely ruined the build of Kalazur. The Cyclones obviously don't have their little tech lab upgrade. So they are not as quick as they could be. Lock on is good though. Maybe a spine is not exactly the best answer, but queens and okay, we cannot lose these queens. But I think Rain is completely fine, right? Shouldn't this be an easy win? Zergling speed is done. First cyclone dies, second one dies, third one dies. Rainer gets number four as well. And there is life in Basilisk yet, because Rainer is gonna get a very convincing game two victory here. Will not fall victim to the double factory, double reactor, one base cheese from Diego. Those four Zerklings sneaking to the other side of the map had a massive impact on how this game got played out. I can guarantee you guys that. I don't know about the Mew. It's all, all over. Not sure what the Mew is supposed to do. Kalazur is going to tap out. Rainer gets our first point on the board. Rainer is obviously not happy. Now he knows he has to deal with your 50% meme comments again in the chat. That I think Loki actually trigger Rainer. Like, come on, guys. I'm the freaking gamers hey champ. Can you guys stop calling me the 50% man? But yeah, he does keep on going 50% in <laughs> with TL, so I get where the memes are coming from. 19% of y'all believe that this was going to be a draw. And it is a draw. That means that we now need a 2-0 victory on the side of Basilisk. I say we as in Basilisk. Zero versus Mana. Best of two. Zero 2-0. Two, Mana 2-0. You're a very brave individual of you, Vito, uh, if you vote for this, by the way. Or a draw. I'll give you guys 10 minutes. Might take a little while before this best of two gets going. So Team Liquid is up 3 to 1. But if Mana loses 0 2 against Saru, and I think that is somewhat likely, right? I don't think that's a crazy statement. Then we would go to an ace match. That'd be pretty sick. 50% in WTL, 100% in Game is 8. Not quite 100% in Game is 8 though, Rainer. You did lose in the group stage. Didn't you lose to Classic? <laughs> well, okay. I'll give you the 95. Do you have the trophy yet? Are they going to send you a trophy? Not yet. Right, I'll take a very tiny break because I have the feeling this is going to take a little while. And then I can make sure that these uh, the ads are properly taken care of, guys. Be right back. Mana versus Cero coming up. It is uh, once more taking a little while, but that's okay. All right. They're back. Mana. A very high rating, by the way, for Mana. 659. Is that higher than Rainer? Did they actually, uh... Did they actually rank mana higher than Raider? <laughs> I don't know what these ratings are based upon. Cero does have by far and away the highest rating of everyone. I don't even think there is a single other player that's above 800. Somehow Cero got 918. I think it is all based upon performance in WTL and WTL alone. So I guess mana has done pretty good. Nice Charmander, by the way, Mana. 
And obviously Yona had an absolutely spectacular season where he literally only lost one map in the entire regular season against Scarlet. So he went like 23 and 1. And then in the playoffs he all killed Abydos. Won a couple games in the grand finals too, but then obviously lost two games against Sola. Mana has that YouTuber background. <laughs> Mana has a great YouTube channel. I mean Mana is a sweetheart, we all love Mana. How much ELO did I get? You're in the 600. You're 600 something. I think it's lower than Manas. I think it is all based upon WTL performance. In the top left side, guys, the Polish stud representing Team Liquid. It is Mana on the new patch. In the bottom right side, for the first time, I get to watch this man. Oh, he looks so cool. He looks so confident. The great Iona Sotala, Cero. Wait, is Mana sending... Oh my goodness, what is Mana doing, guys? He's sending out two probes. Mana is sending out two probes. Mana's up to no good. He's got a weird build. This is why. Ay, ay, ay. I, what is happening here, guys? He's going for YouTube. Mana, press the recording button. He knows what's up. This could get dangerous, man. Obviously, new patch. Ay, ay, ay. What is this? What the hell is this? A full wall of, a forge, a gate, a pylon, a second pylon on the other side of the map. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe we can kill the forge? Can we kill the forge? I feel like we... I don't know if we want to kill the forge. Seems like Sarah wants to go for the gate. I think I would have rather killed the forge than the gate. But okay. Cannons are going to go up, guys. And these cannons are going to be pretty well protected. Mana could just build them on the left and protect that cannon with other buildings. At least the gateway is going to get cancelled. I do think that is inevitable. I, I just don't know what I'm looking at. The gate is going to get cancelled. So Mana, if he wants to get a, like a Robo or a Stargate up... He, oh, he's going to wait for the Cybercore. He's going to get the Cybercore at least. Oh, but he loses that probe. I think that is a big deal. I think that probe dying is a pretty big deal. Mana needs to protect this cannon. That cannon will go up. I would not want to see Sarah attack that cannon. Oh, but he wants to get that probe and he gets the second probe. That is big. And you can see the reaction on Mana's side. That was not a part of the game plan. That getting both probes is a very very big getting both probes is very big you can see it mana's gonna send another probe to the other side of the map might still be able to sort of do his build but whatever he wants to do is going to be very delayed Saro's already gonna mine out the gold minerals so what is the plan here is it stargate robo what are we gonna do stargate or robo what is this i think it looks very good for Saro. That was a wild build by Mana. Sarah actually mining out the gold minerals could sneak a couple of links to the other side of the map. And just six links, even if they're slow links, could potentially end the game. Because I think Mana has nothing at home. It is going to be Proxy Robo, so I guess we're going to try to build some Immortals. Nice amount of Chrono Boost there, by the way. I would like to see Sarah build, like... Four more links because there is nothing in Mana's main. I don't even think Mana has a single pylon at home. And now it's even not even much of a contain, but yeah, there is nothing at home. Legitimately nothing. Even two Zerglings are very annoying here. Rainer pointing out that Cero is still gasless. Yes, he is. Overlord gets the scout off. Cero knows about the Robo. Like, this is so nice. Imagine if these were six links or eight links. But just two links is already very annoying. We're going to have a lot of queens there. We're going to have a lot of queen energy. Even these cannons could just die. I think queens and uh, slow zerglings are going to be fine here. The two links did get cleaned up. That is not the right place to build a spine. We have to be a little bit careful. Immortals do have their new barrier. I, I think it's okay. Two bases against one. Damn, Immortals are so good, eh? It's okay. As good as Immortals are against spine crawlers, they are somewhat questionable against Queens. And then that Crypto Moon is obviously very nice for uh, Mr. Mana. Gerald says he still believes. 
guess he means in mana. I think we're gonna be okay because I feel like the queens should just not die. The creep is far enough out that the cannons are not gonna go up in a very dangerous spot. What is the cooldown, by the way, on the barrier? This is definitely still going to be annoying. Right, serious amount of uh, Protoss nonsense. That hatchery is very low on HP, by the way, guys. The queens are struggling here a little bit, even though a lot of things went wrong for mana. It's definitely starting to look like this is going somewhere, and that hatchery just dies. Sero gives up on the hatch. Is that a drone in the bottom left side, by the way? Lena says, I think we might be dead. I uh, don't think we're going to be dead anytime soon. Because now the Immortals are going to be away from the batteries. And I don't think Mana is going to get the same amount of success. Mana is going to be forced to recall here too, by the way. Mana definitely has to recall, guys. Does not have a uh, port in his main. He's going to have to recall. You cannot take that fight. Mana, Mana, Mana. Ooh, he's going to lose a lot of workers here immediately. There's five probes going down. Saro's actually able to save them. Nice, we've got a hatchery going up on the left side. This is a very unusual Yona game, guys. <laughs> I don't get to see Saro play games like this very often. Uh, one Immortal gets caught in the absolute middle of nowhere, and that should be good enough. These Zerglings are going to be able to pick off one of the three Immortals. Massive pickup, obviously, of a Protoss on one base. And the Zerglings are still keeping... Ma Imagine if Mana would have just had a full wall off with three pylons and a cannon behind it. Then none of this would have happened. And then Saro obviously would have been in some trouble. We're gonna go for a Nidus, baby. So we're gonna get Zerglings, Queens and Nidus going up in the main base of Mana. And I think this many Queens... I think we're fine. Mana drunk? I think Mana had actually a very cool build. And obviously if you're going up against Saro, you need something a bit weird, a bit crazy. What is that? A Stargate? <laughs> The one base robo, one base stargate from mana. I think he's worried about a spire. Which I understand. He's worried about uh, a couple of mutalisks. It's not going to be mutas though. It will be a nidus. And that nidus is going to go up in the bottom of the main base of mana. And I think that's going to be the end. Unless mana has the best overcharge ever. And Saro loses everything against a couple of immortals. A war prism and an overcharge. I don't think that's going to work. Another immortal gets surrounded. This one does get saved though. But the Nidus goes up. Here come the queens. I don't know what those two queens are doing. Come on, send the links to uh, Yona. What about the links? No recall available indeed. Recall is on cooldown. I'd like to see the queens go for that battery. Or the pylon, whatever. Pylon works too. That should be the end, guys. There is no way that Mana is going to kill this amount of queens. This amount of Zerklings. He does find a hidden base. But at least Saro still has a main. Mana's going to evacuate. Wait. I mean, Saro can always just stabilize on one base and slowly but steady get something. This is not going anywhere for Mana. On a bit of uh, Copium, we have entered Cope City. Mana is not just an ordinary citizen, but he's also the mayor. Inhabitants 1, just Mana. Trigger says doable for Mana. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mana has no money to build a uh, Nexus. So he's going to spend his final minerals on two additional batteries. Sarah obviously with the Nidus can expand whatever the hell he wants. Could eventually, if it's ever needed, which I don't think is needed, give up the main. But this amount of queens can hold the front line for days. Sarah will get the 1-0 lead in this little mini best of two. That will keep the hopes and dreams of us Basilisk nerds alive. The Immortals are going to get surrounded. War Prism will die. And that means that is officially the end of game one. Ooh, thank the Lord, guys, that Mana didn't have a wall off. Thank the Lord Mana didn't have a cannon at home. Because that really could have been very dire. Is the new Immortal just very busto in these scenarios? Or... <laughs> Saro continues where he left off last season, and that is win. I do expect Mana to pick one of the new maps. I expect uh, Mana to pick one of the new maps. 
Unless he's got another very busto build on one of the old maps. <laughs> good effort by mana though, good effort. Forge was killed early, so no cannon. Not that early, no? I mean, it's the gateway that died early, not the, not the forge. The forge was indeed killed a little bit later, but not that early. I think the first two Zerglings already disrupted the build a little bit. Saro does not have map choice, because Saro won. Mana has map choice. Mana can pick whatever map he wants. He can go for one of the old maps. Or he can go for one of the new maps. You predict Oceanborn? I predict a rat who set a station. I tried to wall, but the two Zerglings prevented it. Yeah, but that was too late already, no? The links were literally there. Is this National League? Yes. You, you may have missed it in the news this morning, guys, but... From here on out, Finland and Poland are part of the same country. They call it... Poland, actually. They just... <laughs> and this is the new National League. Poland get to keep the PO. Finland kept to keep... Or uh, got to keep the land. And we are we're now watching a new National League... Of a new founded country this morning called Poland. Finland. <laughs> sure, we can go with Finland too. Mana is going to pick one of the new maps. Mana decides to go for Golden Aura. I have played maybe 10 games or so on Golden Aura so far. Seems pretty normal to me. At one point they were both conquered by Sweden, so it wouldn't be the first time. I didn't know that the Vikings were ever in charge of Poland. Here we go. Score is still 3-2 to two in favor of Team Liquid. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the manager, Team Liquid Mana. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of the absolute MVP of the previous WTL Coda season. It is Basilisk Serral. Mm -hmm. Wingen says it's a nice map. I think all the new maps are nice. Even the weird one. Just find out that Sarah was 19 and 0 against Mana. Yeah, I definitely know Mana won a couple maps. Because these two actually met in the grand finals of WCS Austin. So basically DreamHack Austin 2018. They played against each other in the grand finals. Sarah we all expected to be in that grand finals. Mana was just on a bit of a rampage. And Mana actually had the 2-1 lead in the Grand Finals. And Game 4 was on Lost and Found. And Mana was actually in a pretty damn good spot. And if it wasn't for a single run by into the natural that also destroyed everything in the main base, there is a chance that Mana would have taken the 3-1 lead. And then, maybe Mana could have crowned himself a WCS champion. Obviously, he would have needed one more map. In the end, that run by kind of destroyed Mana. Saro managed to tie things up and then he won the remaining two games. Just like Saro won every other game that year. Yeah, that was one hell of a best of seven between these two. Is all this casting pro bono for you or do the event organizers hire you? Well, this kind of stuff is pro bono, but you can't really call it pro bono because I still have people watching, I have people supporting me, so I have. You can also see it as Roddy gets free content. Instead of seeing it as like, oh, Roddy doesn't get paid to cast this. Because I don't get paid to cast this. But I do have amazing content, right? So, wouldn't quite say that it's for nothing. But obviously, I'm a part of Basilisk as well. And they like it if I cover the games. But even if I wasn't a member of Basilisk, I would cover these games. One gate fast expand with indeed a normal setup so far for Team Liquid's mana. How do I feel about the new mothership and bailing? I haven't seen that much of the new mothership yet, but I absolutely hate it is a big word, but I dislike the previous mothership, so I guess any change is good. And the new bailing is absolutely going to help Protoss in this matchup. A single Zergling is going to walk into the main base of uh, Mana. And Sarah will get a very easy scout on that Stargate. I don't think he's too surprised to see the Stargate. Don't lose a probe though, Mana.
These are Pride of Altaris, Thalos, yeah. Same vibes. Unfortunately, no massive gold base though on this map. I do think there are gold bases, or at least one in the bottom left, right? Bottom left is a gold, maybe top right is a gold, but that I'm actually not sure of. But as my Royal Basilisk, all around stud. They said, Roddy, would you like to join Basilisk to be our official stud? And I said, yes. <laughs> I'm the ace too. In case the boys haven't need me, they may need me today. So stud and certified ace. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit of everything, mate. A jack of all trades. I'm a bit of a manager. I'm obviously a streamer. I'm a commentator. I'm a tournament organizer. And I also just uh, hopefully give them a lot of insight in the Star of 2 scene. The easiest answer would just be streamer and representative. But obviously I do a little bit more than that. But I can also play. You know, I'm not, I'm not as good as the other three boys, obviously. But if they truly need someone... It is always nice to have a fourth guy on the roster that can play. Void Ray into Oracle. Hmm. Passion Lord. Sure. Stargate uh, into Twilight, into Forge, into Robo. Okay then, Mana. Mana is just getting all the buildings. It was supply block there for a split second. The third Nexus is finishing up though in the near future. And you also had a pylon finishing up. Not totally certain. Uh, Oracle, hello. Observer, guys. WTL Observer is once more having a very interesting judgment where he's like, you know what? I'd rather look at a couple of links in the middle of nowhere that do kill a battery rather than following the Oracle. I don't know if the Oracle. Yeah, okay, it lives. So two drones died on the side of Serral. Oracle took a lot of damage, but it does stay alive. <laughs> hello, Brad, by the way. And hello, Coco. So many lovely people in the chat today. Serral is probably wondering, what else do you have in store for me, Mana? Because that first game, of course, was wild, crazy, unique. So far in the second game, things look somewhat normal, but will it stay normal forever? Zero drops the Spire, okay. Don't hate it. Could be kind of hard maybe for Mana to scout this. One of the Oracles is very low in HP. These adapts though, if he lets the Shade finish up, but he doesn't. Well, not scouted yet. Mana just has a bunch of gateways coming online, plus one and charge. So it could just be a, a good old Zealot, Immortal. Maybe an Archon attack, because we do of course have a Templar, uh, Twilight Council and there comes the Templar Archives. Maybe Mana will just send it with Zealot Immortal Archon. I think I like the Spire. But it's also a little bit risky to not have uh, roaches. <laughs> and we are going to get a couple of roaches. Once more drones are dying, WTL Ops just does not care. It does want... Oh. Four drones died, both oracles still alive, and there is a chance that the oracle has now uh, found the spire too, yeah. I think that much is obvious because Mana is already queuing up a phoenix. Second stargate as well, Mana is going to take this very serious, and I would say rightfully so. Man, that's a big scout for Mana, guys. Not only did Mana get a couple of drones, if this was right now not Zero against Mana, a lot of people would say that this game looks incredibly good for the Protoss. But fortunately for us, it is mana against Serral. And Serral does manage to get at least a cancel on the fourth base. I'm afraid that these Mudas are going to be very uh, underwhelming. The Oracles are going to get recalled after they dropped one more revelation. I'm afraid that Serral's Mudas guys are going to get less done than I've ever seen them done before. I see one phoenix here, but there has to be more phoenix, right? Doesn't he have like already three phoenix or so? Why is the quality so bad? Don't mean to be toxic. Because I am only allowed to just watch his stream. I cannot join these games and give you guys HD quality. Uh, because they want to show off their sponsors. So the only thing I am allowed to do is watch his stream. But it was not the cleanest phoenix micro there, guys. So, Sarah is Mutalisk already doing a little bit more than I thought they were going to do. And actually doing a whole lot more. Sweet baby Jesus. 
a dead phoenix and 12 probes and a dead battery. <laughs> Alright, but well, I was worried there for a split second. Now I'm a whole lot less worried. 18 probes. What the hell am I watching? What's happening in the main, by the way? The main is still blinking. It really did look very good for mana 60 seconds ago, guys. I was not lying. This was not fake hype or anything. It actually looked very promising for mana. And now a bunch of Mutalists have just completely turned this game on its head. Even though the Spire was revealed. We had a few Phoenix ready. We had Archons. So I was not going to get on top of that other base too. Phoenix is still dying. More probes could potentially fall. And Seral's just running circles around mana here. In game 6 of... The season opener for both Team Liquid and Basilisk. Both teams obviously 0-0. Opening plate of the season. I cannot believe how effective these Mutas have been, guys. I didn't dub the GOAT. I never said that I think Zero was going to lose. I just said if this was a regular PvZ, this would look pretty bad for the Zerg. But then I also said it's a good news. It's not a regular PvZ. And we've got the great Yona Sutala because we are maxed out 200 supply against 114 supply. Things fell apart real quick there for mana. I can't believe it, guys. I cannot believe it. Yona continues where he left off last season. And that is just win, win, win in WTL code as a 2-0. Very important one. Means that we keep our hopes and dreams alive. And now I'm going to have to talk to the boys very quickly. Up, up, up. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Ooh. No. <laughs> the boys are now discussing who we are sending as an ace. And Reyna's contribution to the chat has been sent Roddy? Question <laughs> mark. Alright guys, I'm just going to go ahead and take a little break. I'm going to discuss this with the boys. It will definitely take a couple minutes anyway. I'll just play some music and uh, see what we decide. Uh, give me one sec. Full focus on the team. Be right back guys. Ace match between Team Liquid and Basilisk coming up. Alright. Uh, still trying to keep you in suspense, but it is Sarah versus Clem. I haven't started yet. First time ever we get to see Saro versus Clem, guys. On the new patch. Hmm. A best of one for all the marbles. Obviously both uh, teams will get at least one point for this going to an ace match. The winner of the ace match gets two points in the regular season. If you win a best of seven Clem War, uh, obviously 11 Clem Wars to go. Or well, 10 to go after this one. Then you get three points. Mm. Liquid Clément versus the great Iona Sotala. Both of the handsome nerds are on your screen. A best of one on altitude. Don't think we can complain too much about altitude being the ace match here. And you have two absolute Zerg animals on your roster. <laughs> Here we go in the top right side, uh, representing the boys in blue. They had a 3-0 lead, but here we are in the ace match. He had a 2-0 victory over Trigger, it is. Liquid Clam. And in the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the guy that we should all be talking about for all the amazing things he has been doing in StarCraft 2 for the last six years at this point. The great Iona Sotala, Cero. Now, a lot of you guys will probably know that Cero is not necessarily... The biggest fan of Altitude. Even though Altitude is a very big Zerg map, Sero has been pretty vocal about this in the past, that he does not love Altitude as much as, for instance, the green map. And with the green map, he means Ancient. Uh, but even if you don't really love it as Sero, it's hard to imagine that Clem looks at Altitude and he's like, oh, I love Altitude, you know? So, even if it's not Sero's best map, it is obviously not Clem's best map either. And I think that should still favor us a little bit. How is Clem going to play this TVZ on the new patch? Are we going to see some weird Hellion Cyclone opener? Will it be all out mech? Or will Clem play a relatively standard style? Saros map taste is something else anyways. Well, 
What is annoying for Zerg players on this map, even though it's obviously a very large map and it's wide open and it does favor Zerg in general with all their quick ground units, is that there is a lot of high ground, low ground. So spreading creep on this map is a little bit more annoying than it is on some of the other maps. On top of that, you have to go in so many ways. That sometimes a single scan can really make it hard for you to get creep going in a certain direction for quite some time. We also have to obviously keep in mind that the Baneling is a little less powerful on this patch than it was in the previous one. No way you can play nerf Banes with Clem's middle game pressure. I don't know. We're about to find out. These are all things that I think we can only speculate on. We've seen a couple of very good P uh, TVZs between Special and E-Laser in the big rain bouts. was an amazing series. E-Laser was very close to just getting the job done 3-0. In the end, it turned into a 3-2 victory for Special, but those games were very close and competitive. Ooh, and Reaper almost getting a drone there. We definitely don't want to lose a drone in the early game against Clem. Um, yes. Thank you, Slowly. Slowly answered that question perfectly. Regular season is very important. Now, of course, we are not worried about like not making the playoffs. If we would somehow not make the playoffs, that would be one of the craziest things I've ever seen in StarCraft. But it obviously helps to have a very good finish. And on top of that, we are undefeated in WTL code as regular season, so we'd like to keep it that way. And it's obviously always nice to start off with a good start. First two Cyclones are already on the production tab. The Reaper of Clem is doing its thing, finding a few of the Zerglings, but most importantly on the side of Sarah is that he's not losing any drones. Hasn't lost any drones yet. Since this is such a large map though, I would say that Cyclones should be a little bit less annoying, right? Because it will take so long for Cyclones to make their way from the top side of the map to the bottom side of the map. And I think it should be somewhat doable to get a nice little Zergling surround on them. Oh, this can hurt though. That's an absolutely fantastic grenade for Clem. Liquid Claymore, guys, drops the best grenade that I have seen in a little while as he bounces two queens off creep. Oh my goodness. Clem gets all three and he's off to an absolutely flying start. And that means that now Zero and Basilisk immediately is in a little bit of trouble. What a grenade by Clem. Bounces two queens off creep right when the Cyclones show up. At least the Zerklings are here. The Zerklings going to try to get a wraparound immediately. We get the first one. We get the second one. And perhaps big crisis averted. But yeah, losing those queens does really hurt. Uh, I think it's okay. It's very painful to lose that many queens early on. But I will not say that it's GG immediately. Whew. What a grenade. What a grenade by Klimo. That is a lot of Hellions right now. Saro has a lot of his links, guys, looking for a counterattack on the other side of the map. And Clem may just send it into the natural. The links are terribly out of position. Saro did not expect Clem to go for a move like this. Five drones die immediately, make it eight. And I think we're in danger of losing a whole lot more. Nice Evo Chamber block, and that at least saved the majority of the drones in the main. Yes, but losing that many drones does really suck. Even if all these Hellions do get picked off here. Cannot afford to lose another drone. Clem is going to try to kill drones from the high ground. And he even gets those. Oh, gets one. But still. Oh, what a start. What a start here, guys, for Clem. Five and a half minutes into altitude. Stim is ten seconds away from finishing up. A lot of things going Clem's way. Third command center finishing up in the main base. Two Cyclones, two Reapers, six Hellions for three Queens, 20 Lings and 12 Drones. Serol definitely not off to the start that I think he was dreaming of. No, oh, no, 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 no. That is not a run by we can make. Still playable for Serol. He won from much worse. Perhaps that is true, but that's probably often against people that are a lot worse than Clem. Yeah. Serol needs to be absolutely perfect in the next two minutes for this game to go anywhere. And I don't know if it's possible to be perfect against the clan with two medevacs, 15 marines on the other side of the map, and Stim. We're gonna just wait and see. This could be the very first time, guys, that Basilisk is going to lose a clan war in the WTL code as regular season. I was going to try to send the Zerglings into the main base. So far, so good. Clem not really getting a whole lot done yet with his first 15 Marines. Mm, 
and that allows us to still be somewhat hopeful. Amazing amount of queens, by the way, despite the fact that we lost three queens that early. It is played on the European server. It's played on an old map, but it is played on the Neo patch. First few winter mines already out. Second factory has been planted down as well. So Clemens is going to play Marine Marauder Widow Mine. I'm expecting obviously to see Drilling Claws being researched as well. As soon as there is a tech lab on one of these factories. It's going to be incredibly difficult for Saro guys. If Saro wins this game, I will be incredibly impressed. Zergling counterattack on the third. Observer decides to not show it. We're going to take a little look at it. Not bad. Widow Mines, can they blow up a couple of SCVs perhaps? Nope. But... Still though, still some Zerglings left over. Gotta say though, Clem is doing a very good job in minimalizing the damage here. And these Metavacs, look at these Metavacs guys. How are these Metavacs still this fine? Does seem that Clem lost most of his Marines in the bottom side of the map. Wow, one SCV died there or zero? That's crazy. Zero SCVs died. I mean, I know those were only Lings and not Banes, but still. How the hell did Clem lose zero SCVs there? <laughs> That's illegal! That is actually illegal! But at least, guys, Sarah bought a little bit of time and he took away some of the pressure that Clem was applying. We are looking at a decent amount of roaches and the first few infestors are on the way. New patch obviously means that the infestors no longer need to wait until they can fungal. Pathogen glands is no longer a part of this game, so we can immediately just drop fungals. And Clem is actually gonna play tanks. After realizing that Saro is now cranking out roaches. So no Widow Mines anymore on the side of Clay Maw. This is going to be a Marine Marauder tank. Which obviously makes sense against roaches and ravages. Nine minutes in. Very uh, interesting game so far. Where Clem was obviously off to a fantastic start. But Saro is once more showing us that it is never easy to get him out of a game. Got a hive on the way. Nine minute hive. These three Marines have been pretty annoying. The Medivac is buffed too, but isn't the Medivac only buffed after the upgrade? You can fungo four times with a full energy investor. They changed it from 75 to 50. Why are you not allowed to join and ops the games? Well, there are two reasons for that. Obviously, if they let me join, there are seven or eight other commentators that want to join, and that increases the chance of observers lagging. And the second reason is that they want to show off their Chinese sponsors. And uh, Obviously, we should all be very happy that WTO is a thing. And if this is the way that they want to do it, I think we just have to respect that. As long as the clean feed works, I don't really mind it that much. Yesterday, it stopped a couple of times at very unfortunate moments. Then it does become frustrating, but sure. It's not the best quality ever, but I think it is more than good enough to enjoy the games. It has nothing to do with the integrity of the match. I don't know why you're making stuff up. That has nothing to do with it. I don't know about this fight, but we do have roaches coming in from the right, and that makes it slightly better. We have a burrow being researched as well. Obviously, Clem is going to be a four base Terran. Clem is going to be a Terran that will be able to enjoy some ghosts. And is going to be able to enjoy the 2 2 upgrades. But Yona is battling, guys. We have 192 supply on the side of Saro. Despite the fact that this felt like an absolutely atrocious start. Saro is still getting into a uh, playable position. I would say he's still behind. But once we get Hive Tech, we have Vipers on the way. We get a couple of Lurkers. We are allowed to dream. Yeah, I don't think that a Nefesta can uh, fungal four times, mate. Why is it 720p from the feed? Because that is what I have to live with, mate. Why all these questions, guys? <laughs> I am not in charge of these things. I am just here showing you guys some games, trying to do a good job and make it fun. And obviously cheer for my team. I am not in charge of anything else. A couple of the Marines get fungal and will get picked off. But obviously Saro needs to be somewhat cautious that he doesn't use too much energy on too few units. Things are big. Seems that Sarah's going to lose all these roaches while he doesn't really get anything done, but we are stabilizing on five bases. Six lurkers on the way, guys. Adreno glands on the way. Seismic finds on the way. I do think Sarah's gonna be forced to give up on this base on the left. 
I don't really want to see Serral take bad fights trying to save this base and then lose the game. Now, obviously, who am I to uh, doubt Serral? But kind of feel that Serral needs more time. And I think that Clem knows that Serral needs more time. We do have a single up duck landing, but that is pretty much all there is to it. Tanks are still somewhat far away. As painful as it is, I kind of want to see Serral give up on this base. I mean, maybe Serral feels that if he gives up on this base, he's going to lose the game. I think here we are safe with the Queens and Lurkers. That is okay. Nice transfuse as well. We're going to keep the Queen alive. Let's move back to our Lurker a little bit. Seismic Spines is now ready. The ghost count is so freaking high. Plenty of snipes available. Pew, pew, pew. Another Lurker bites the dust. Serral does have a bit of money. Really does not want to give up on this base, guys. We have four Lurkers. Fungo does connect on a couple of the Marines. We have a Sharking Infestor on the right, but I don't think we have Neuroparasite. But we could obviously land a sick Fungo. Hatchery is now taking severe damage as there is a tank in range of the Hatchery. This Hatchery, I think, is now officially going to fall. We have a couple of Fungals. NEP landed on the Vipers. Lurk is getting picked off. Zero is running into a lot of tanks here. I hope he knows what he is doing. He's going to unburrow that Infestor, lands another sweet fungo, gets a decent amount of the tanks, and Serral's actually starting to sort of break through, but there are more tanks near the Zelnaga Watchtower. Don't we have to stop eventually? Serral has a couple of extra links showing up, and apparently the answer to the question is no. Serral gets each and every single tank, and did he save that hatch? How on earth was that possible? It's not the biggest victory. I don't think he saved the hatch right now. The hatchery did die. The hatch died towards the very end. I think Serral did about as good as he could ever do there, but I don't, still don't know if that's enough. But maybe if we land one more big magical Fungo, as we do land the Fungo immediately, the Ops turned away. So one or two of the Ghosts died there. Serral down in supply. Has stabilized at least on four bases. Hey, Adaptive Talents is no longer a part of this game, right? So there is only one Lurker upgrade you have to get. You only get Seismic Spines. Adaptive Talents is completely gone. I think Clem is still in the lead, but that was amazing by Saro. That was legitimately amazing. Ah, it's still there. Okay. All right. I don't think Saro has that upgrade yet. No speed movement uh, buff, only the burrow buff. Okay. I don't think Saro has it. I think Saro only has seismic spines. That definitely finished up. And it's 50 50 cheaper. Oh, he already got it? Okay, I missed it. Must be very short then, the research time. Or did he somehow get it before Seismic Spines? No, right? Five more Lurkers on the way. Both players are maxed out. He got it faster than usual because of the discount. Okay. Big buff, big buff. And good news is, guys, that the Vipers got buffed too. Otherwise, Sarah would have already killed his own Hive three times over. Thank the Lord for the Viper buff. Seems like we're going to go for an all-out counter-attack. And Clem has his entire army on the left. So he's going to be a little bit out of position. And this is a lot of lurkers that are going to be in a very annoying spot. We are getting some very big shots off already in the center. Serral did such a great job there in spacing out these lurkers. This is obviously risky too, guys. Because if Serral loses his entire army, he's going to hurt. But so far, he's doing pretty good. And now the floodgates are open. The links are going to kill a lot of SCVs at the triangle. There are lurkers in the natural. Clem's supply is dropping. Does still have a lot of ghosts. Can we get the eBays, by the way? Can those zirklings somehow get the eBays? There's lurker galore happening at this point. Lurkers everywhere. I mean, Saro has clean. Excuse me, Clem has cleaned this up for the majority of it. Supply is still close. A couple of zirklings are burrowed, but they are burrowed in the range of a missile turret. What an amazing best of one between these two. The game is alive and kicking, guys. They often talk about football where, like, the game is gone, the game is back. Well, StarCraft ain't gone, baby. So, uh, Clem does have plus three attack now. Plus three has finished up. A plus three armor is still going. Five lurkers getting on top of the triangle there. A couple of depots. The bunker will die. Serral's doing his absolute best to outmaneuver Clem. It's going to be very hard for the Lynx to get great fights. You know what's also interesting is that we just didn't even build a Baneling Nest, eh? There is just no Baneling Nest. Plus two melee is somewhat close to finishing up. The Lynx, though, guys, they're going to honestly not be very impactful. The tanks at least die. I 
think it's kind of time to go back on the side of Sero, but Sero is still going to try and stick around a little bit longer. Looks like we dropped something there, maybe a power bomb, but I kind of missed it. The lurkers are proper annoying for Clem. Clem obviously playing still one hell of a game. Sero leaving a couple of lurkers. Oh, we have a bailing nest, okay. Bailing speed just finished, yeah, 15 banes. Those are the first 15 bailings, I believe, we have on the way. I don't think I've seen a single bailing up to this point. They might be on hold position, yeah, those lurkers in the center. That's definitely true. <laughs> nice spot to unload there behind the debris. Uh, with the current upgrades, that's not really a fight you want to take. Clem is going to try to make some progress once more on the left. There are still lurkers being annoying. Even though that lurker is not really in a dangerous spot, it is still frustrating if you're Clem and you know that they are there. Both of the nurse are maxed out, but it has been all but a dull max out game. 18 minutes of pretty much non-stop battling ever since that first grenade landed and the queens were knocked out of creep. Sero again with a big run by into that third base, guys. Every single time, Clem gets a good setup here on the left. The Observer is just not showing us an entire fight right now. I think there were Lurkers, Hydras, and Danes trying to get on top of that base. Seems that Clem is safe. As Clem lands a few snipes. Pew, 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 pew. Couple of Lurkers dying on the left. Sero protecting his absolutely amazing record in WTO Code S. Only one player ever managed to take a map of Usero in the regular season of WTO Code S, and that is Scarlet. Clem is gonna try to join that very, very short list of individuals. Another shocking investor, but another scan immediately. It's almost like Clem saw the shadow there. As we're gonna try to go for it with Lings, Banes, Hydras. That is an orbital on the left. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. We're gonna land a little abduct on the Liberator. Can we borrow a couple banelings, guys? <laughs> I don't know if there are that many bio units. Now, what a game. Another infester is ready to sneak up on the right. Clem has done a very good job in denying this from happening so far, but this time around, I think the fungal will connect, and that is a picture perfect fungal. Hydras are gonna try to get in range. A lot of the tanks are dying, the ghosts are dying, and even though Serral spending every single penny that he can get his hands on, he is finding some amazing fights here and some amazing trades. What a game by Yona, guys. What a game. Mental. Personal cloaking is finishing up. Another tank will fall. The second tank near the Zelnaga Watchtower is also going to get picked off. And look at the bottom right, by the way. Sero has now gotten his hands on the gold. He has gotten his hands on that bottom right base. And even the base at 4 o'clock belongs to Yona at this point. While doing all those moves, all that aggression, all that battling with Clem's army, the man is also expanding like a mad lad. Yona is so good at StarCraft, guys. Yona is so good at StarCraft. <laughs> Single uh, burrowed zirkling there, making it a bit harder. And Sarah is now going to try to get a fight immediately, right before that base lands. We're going to drop a power bomb in the middle of all these medevacs. The tank gets abducted. The second tank gets abducted as well. Hydra, Link Bane, all three. Can these Banelings connect with the targets that they are looking for? You have the tank shot land. Big Banely connections on the right. And that is good enough. The great Yona Sotala brings home the reverse sweep for Basilisk. The man had to work hard for it. He had to dig deep. But Sero is showing us old patch, new patch. He is still the man. 4-3 in favor of Basilisk. We win our season opener after being down 0-3 against the boys in blue. That was one hell of a clam war, guys. One of the best clam wars I think I've seen in the regular season of WTL Code S. Wow. Awesome series and another stunning performance by Sero. Had to face some adversity there in that final game. Was definitely put to the task against the weird opening from Mana as well, Neo Humanity, but Yona brings it home for us. GG's. We get uh, two points. Uh, Team Liquid gets one point for this going to an ace match. And that is the ending of the first best of seven of the day. That's not the end of WTL Code S today, though, guys. We have another match coming up SSLT versus Sidestorm Gaming. That means you guys get to see some max packs and spirit. Uh, that should be awesome. I'll show you guys the matchups. I do want to let everyone know that Wardy is also running an amazing tournament at the moment. Korean Royale Season 2. It's still going on. A couple of amazing games to look forward to there. Uh, Cure versus... Yeah, I forgot about the interviews, by the way. I guess 
<laughs> I didn't, like, I don't know. I'm down to do an interview, but I also kind of want to cover the second match, so... Maybe we'll do that a little bit later. I don't know if the boys are down for that, but we might do that a bit later. And then they can just combine the two videos. I hope that's okay. But yeah, Cure against Beyond right now, guys, over at Wadi Stream. Cure vs. Beyond. Amazing tournament. Winner will play against Dark. Winner of that will play against Maru. So amazing Korean StarCraft over at twitch.tv slash Wadi. We will continue with the WTL code S. I'll see if the boys want to do an interview right now. If they want to do it right now, then I guess we can do it right now. Yeah. <laughs>